Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, I am Dr. Pramod Malik from Department of Laws, Bhagat Phool Singh, Mahila Viswidyale, Khanpur Kala, Haryana. So today we are going to discuss one of the important topic under copyright law that is concept of fair dealing. So although copyright law is exclusive right granted to the creator or an author by the government for limited period of time. We have discussed already this limited period is lifetime of an author plus 60 years. So here when exclusive right is there, author has right to exclude all other person from using that thing unless until they take permission from author. So here we can say if someone is not taking the permission from author or not giving royalty to him, he can file a case against that person. But there are some exceptions are there under Indian Copyright Act where the law as well as judiciary has given exceptions to those persons. So how those exceptions are there, special provisions are added in Indian Copyright Act to make balance between the private interest of author with the public interest. So that is called fair dealing. So here just I want to say what is fair? This fair is depend on each individual cases and the circumstances of and fact and circumstances of individual cases although uh, different cases are different facts and circumstances. So judge will determine how much or at what extent this IP is how much IP is too much. So here yeah, how much infringement is too much. So that will depend on from case to case. So we can say here under copyright act there are two types of exceptions. First one is compulsory licensing, although we have studied it earlier in patent law also under section 84 of Indian Patent Act. But now here we will study again as an exception of Indian Copyright Act that is called compulsory licensing. Now second one is fair dealing, the most important aspect of Indian Copyright Act comes under section 51.2. One infringement cases under section 51, but now we will study this exceptions which are we will cover section 52. So, this section 52 some these matters are there which can be comes under. First of all, we can see here this private and personal use this copyright act. So, what are the private and personal use? Some uh, CD or book, he can use it for, for example, uh, this Fitchy notes or VMC or any other IIT or we can say NIT is so they can use it for only private circulation only. So, they can if you are buying the CD also, you can also use it privately. You can't play these CDs or these DVDs in public. So that is also, but you can use it for personal use. So second important thing is, if any person is using the literary work or we can say also CD work, CD or the, we can say DVD for education purposes they are also exempted under this section 52. We can take example of uh, this uh, copyright act uh, which was amended in 2012 which has also now this given uh, these cinematograph films and musical work can be covered under this fair dealing. Before that no one can use these uh, cinematograph films and uh, these, uh, these musical work in the universities or colleges. But now amendment is made for using these movies as well as 
म्यूजिकल वर्क इन द कॉलेज और यूनिवर्सिटीज सो बट द मेन कंसर्न रिलेटिंग टू द दिस लिटरेरी वर्क सो सो मेनी टाइम्स वी आर यूजिंग दीज रिसर्च पेपर्स और डेजर्टेशन और इंथीसीज ऑल दीज वर्क वी आर कॉपीड फ्रॉम सम अदर सोर्सिज बट द मेन थिंग इज वी हैव टू एक्नोलेज दोज ऑथर्स इन आवर वर्क सो हेयर दैट इज एग्जेप्टेड वी कैन यूज कॉपी राइट मेटीरियल विदाउट परमिशन ऑफ ऑथर इन दिस वी कैन से एजुकेशनल और रिसर्च पर्पज ऑल्सो सो आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू अबाउट दिस दीज द मूवीज एंड नाउ सॉन्ग्स कैन ऑल्सो बी प्लेड फॉर एजुकेशन एंड दिस रिसर्च पर्पज फॉर अकेडमिक यूज ऑल्सो सो अनदर कंसर्न इज रिव्यू एंड क्रिटिसिजम सो वी कैन ऑल्सो रिव्यू any book any movie or we can take a part of that we can take snippet of that particular movie or that particular book for our we can say in research purpose also and we can also review that particular book particular article or any other movie also hence it side by side we have also right to criticize that thing it is our fundamental right under article 19 there is freedom of speech and expression so here we can review that thing also and we can criticize that thing also as a part of freedom of speech and expression but it should not be comes into the defamation also so we can also report current events as we have already discussed as a student or as a, this newspaper reporter we can also go for the reporting of current events as current events and facts are not copyrightable so current events are not comes under the copyright and facts are also not covered under the copyright so any person can now use current events or facts in their uh, these their reports also and their work also so another concern is news reporting so another concern is news reporting now any newspaper newspaper owner or reporter or any broadcaster also who deals with the news these new channels can also make news recording of any event also or anything which they want to criticize or which is of national importance they can be discuss as taken plea under the section 52 of indian copyright act 1957 so we we can also take this particular clause for legislative proceedings legislative proceeding also includes the, the lok sabha proceedings राज्य सभा प्रोसीडिंग्स एंड विधान सभा प्रोसीडिंग्स एंड विधान परिषद प्रोसीडिंग्स आल्सो सो ऑल द प्रोसीडिंग्स ऑल द लोकसभा डिबेट्स और ऑल द पार्लियामेंट प्रोसीडिंग्स कैन बी कवर्ड अंडर दिस लेजिस्लेटिव प्रोसीडिंग्स सो एनीवन कैन गो फॉर दैट एंड मेक यूज फॉर देयर ओन दीज पर्सनल यूज ऑल्सो सो हेयर जुडिशियल प्रोसीडिंग्स आर ऑल्सो कम्स इन पब्लिक डोमेन सो दीज गवर्नमेंट वर्क they are also comes for the public domain any person from public can use this legislative as well as judicial proceeding so judicial proceeding includes both supreme court cases and high court cases of different states so these things are specially mentioned in this indian copyright act for giving we can say access to all these laws and uh, the judgments to all persons so here special section is inserted in indian copyright act relating to fair dealing but there is no special word is mentioned fair dealing in our this copyright act but there are these are the circumstances yeah these are the cases where any person who is using the copyright act are exempted from this uh, from infringement so it is specifically saying this section 52 specifically states certain acts not to be infringement of copyright as first of all we must know what is infringement infringement is that thing which what we can say if any person is using the work of any other person or copyright work of any other person without his permission that amounts to infringement and that must be for commercial use that must be without permission then it amounts to infringement but as per section 52 these acts following acts does not amount to this infringement so first of all as we have done but these all that these things whether it is a literary work artistic work we can say musical work or uh, these cinematograph work 
photographs all are comes under that. So, what it says it is except computer programs. So, if we are dealing with, with any work we can say private personal including research. So, we have already discussed you can use any copyright work for private and personal use if you buy that particular work. You can also use it in research for academic and education purposes also. So, section 52 specifically says about, about this research work also. You can also take chart, take flow chart or any work of any other science, science uh, this scientist also or any other professor also by acknowledging under your work. Otherwise, it may be amount to plagiarism. So, you just have to give credit to or acknowledge the work of another person from where you have taken the work. So, you can also criticize review, we have already uh, this discuss the reporting of current events, you can also use current affairs including the reporting of lectures in the public. So, we have also if someone is deliver a lecture in the public that is just an idea, but if some another person is by using his skill express in written form that will come under this reporting and that reporting is comes under the we can say doctrine of fair dealing and that is exception under section 52. So, after that we can say there is reproduction of any work for the purpose of judicial proceedings. So, judicial proceeding if you are an advocate or if, if you are a student or if you are an Indian citizen you can use the judicial proceeding as they are in public domain government has made special provision for exception of that thing. So, you can also report those judicial proceeding. For example, if some this supreme court judge or high court judge has delivered one judgment which are related to for example, LGBT which are related to right to privacy for example, Aadhaar case is there. You can use that judgment for you can also review that judgment, you can also criticize that judgment and you can also make uh, this uh, article or you can also uh, write uh, some report on that particular judgment also. So, that is comes under public domain. So, reproduction of or the publication of any work prepared by secretariat of legislature. Ab now, as we have also done legislative proceedings are also comes under this uh, house. Uh, this legislature consists of two house, secretariat of either house, Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha or exclusive for the use of member of that legislature. So, anyone can use these things for their own purpose for personal use also for uh, research, review and uh, we can say other things for news reporting also whether these are the judicial proceedings or these are we can say uh, these uh, legislative proceedings. So, reproduction of wo any work in a certified copy made or supplier in accordance with law in fine. If there is some certified copies there, you can reproduce in your form, you can also translate it and can you can use it for your own personal or uh, we can say uh, this criticism or review purpose also. The reading or recitation in public of reasonable extract. Now, not whole reasonable extract are excusable under this act. So, we can say here excerpts you can use here small part of that for example, new channels are using the small excerpts from any match is going on live. So, you can also read some part of we can say uh, some lecture also some part of book also some par part of paper also for uh, we can say from literary or dramatic work on the uh, stage also or before the public also, but it depend on that we will also do this doctrine of public uh, this uh, the doctrine of we can say here fair, uh, fair use where the amount is also specified how much amount you are coping or at what rate you are coping that has to be decided in number of cases. So, the publication in a collection mainly composed of non copyright matter um, this matters you can also take uh, this publication in a collection you can make collection of that particular thing, but it must be bona fidely it should be composed of non copyrightable matter whether some has a delivered lecture, but it is not copyrightable you can make collection of those lectures of any public leader also political leader also uh, with related to, but 
the intention must be bona fide and it must be used for instructional use. For example, you can use in the classes also, you can use for education or academic purpose also. And it describes in little or any advertisement issues on behalf of publisher of short passage from published literary dramatic work. So, you can also use in a fair manner, fair manner as we have discussed in the first slide ki how much uh, this what is the fair. Fair is depend on each and individual each facts and circumstances of each separate individual cases. So, from that judge has to apply his mind to, uh, to see how much copyright work is infringed and whether it is for commercial use or for uh, non-commercial use. So, here we can say this is a doctrine of fair dealing. Now, just we are go going for the fair use. This fair use is you this doctrine is used in USA and this fair dealing is used in India and UK. As India has taken this doctrine of fair dealing from UK and in USA this name is different that is doctrine of fair use. Here we have 50, section 52 where list is there in this particular this uh, list we, we are not falls under the, the term infringement, but we are comes under the doctrine of fair dealing. So, here, but in USA fair use is there which includes four these things, four points are there means the purpose and character of the use for which purpose you are using whether you are using for commercial purpose or whether you are using for the educational purpose. If you are using bona fidely for good purpose, for public interest purpose, for educational purpose that is not amounts to infringement that is a good thing that will be excusable under this doctrine of fair use. Now, the second important thing is the nature of copyright work. The how the we in starting also I am telling you ki how much is too much, ki how much intellectual property right is too much because copyright is now including most of the things uh, in our life. So, here the, we have to see what is the nature of that copyright work, whether it is literary work, artistic work and up to what extent we are using and for which purpose we are using from that copyright work. We have to see both these points together and third thing is the amount and substantiality of the portion of the copyright work. Now, for which purpose you are this using and what are the nature of that original copyright work and now the amount you are taken from that. For example, now UGC has also given guidelines relating to plagiarism ki how much words you can take from any other sources for your thesis or for your dissertation and for how much percent you can make copy from other sources. It is maximum 10 percent in 2018 rules UGC. So, specific now word uh, these copying is fixed in India also. For now in doctrine of fair use it is the amount which matters ki whether you have taken whole uh, this work or whether a few words from that or whether you have copied same to same or whether you have copied uh, in different manner, whether you have taken consciously or whether you have taken uh, subconsciously. So, that also amounts to and substantiality of a matter. For example, in a particular work some important quotation is there and you have taken from that, that is the crux of that particular quotation, a particular work and similarly you have taken the main climax scene of particular movie and that also you are taken in your movie that amounts to infringement. So, it is the amount also matter, but substantially is substantiality of that matter is more important than amount because amount be of just like a obiter dicta, but you are copying the ratio decidentity of some work the region or the main points of that particular work that may amount to we can say here uh, this uh, infringement and, but you are taking the small pa big part, but it is not substantiality of that particular po that portion, then it will be not infringement, it may be comes under the fair use. So, these three things have we have to keep in mind regarding this if we are using the 
copyright work of any other person. Now, from these three points, how much monetary loss is we have yeah, that copyright owner have taken yeah, having loss from the, our this uh, publication of work. So, this is the deciding factor for filing a case. These three points are one side and this point is another side. Why? Because this intellectual property law or the copyright law are economic in nature because they are providing you economic rights to you. So, this is the monetary effect which uh, this force the we can say copyright owner to file a case against you because he has suffered monetary loss and fourth factor under this fair use is saying monetary effect of the use upon the potential market. If you are making copy of copy of some copyright work and you, you are taking benefit from that economic benefit, financial benefit, then you have right to give some royalty to that person also. So, that original owner can have right to file a case against you if you are taking commercial benefit from his work by copying by you. So, that is very good doctrine under this doctrine of fair use, it is implemented in USA that is good thing for that. So, how this doctrine is evolved? This doctrine is evolved by judiciary. Judiciary has done so many given so many important judgment we will discuss this first versus rural telephone directory all these things we will discuss in later slides. So, fair use doctrine is actually evolved by the judiciary. It is a safety wall on the copyright because it is making balance between the public and private interest. It is taking, it is we can say protecting the interest of public, it is protecting the interest of student, it is pre, uh, protecting the interest of academy, academia. So, it is that is why it is called safety wall on the copyright because copyright is dealing with the exclusive right and fair use is an exception to that for making balance between the uh, this private right with the public right. So, it permits copyright users to use copyright material. So, this fair use and fair dealing doctrines are permitting this copyright user to use copyright material fairly. Now, this word we have to take into consideration this fairly word means you cannot copy in toto, but you can take it in a reasonable manner. So, it should be that this word fairly is used. Now, this fairly is also depends on facts and circumstances of each and individual cases. So, that is the main thing fairly is not a word which is we can say fixed in a particular thing ki this is fair or this is unfair. It depends or it will be decided by the judiciary ki how much work you have copied is fair or not. So, by this user may print, reprint, publish, copy or when they work protected by a copyright. So, under this you can also publish, but the thing is that you should use that thing in fair manner. That is the most important thing for this word you can come under section 52, otherwise you will go for the this uh, infringement. So, we can dis discuss under the uh, this doctrine of fair use, very important case first publication in corporation versus rural telephone service company. So, here the first publication is have also made a telephone directory, we can say yellow pages. For example, someone is made, made yellow pages also in India, for example, Tata made a yellow pages in where the phone number so every person is there with house number also with name also. So, if someone is going to uh, make or to find out you, they can go for the yellow pages. So, someone this rural telephone services has also made this telephone directory and this fish, fish publisher are also made a telephone directory. Now, the question arises ki whether uh, this making yeah, making list or making compilation of data amounts to copyright. Now, in this case it is specifically said by this US court ki information alone without a minimum of original creativity cannot protected by copyright. What it means? For example, in this class 
I am taking name, roll number and email uh, this ID and phone number of every student with address. So, and some another and made one directory of all the students and similarly one another person is taking uh, this your name, your father's name, your address, phone number, email ID and made another directory. So, can I file a case against that person? So, that is the main thing. So, all these things are in public domain. So, we cannot say these are comes under this copyright work. So, that is why this court is saying ki this original creativity is there or not. So, there are two doctrine we will discuss in another slide ki this there is a doctrine of we can say this modicum of creativity and sweat of bro. So, we will discuss here there must be some minimum creativity in your work then we will go for copyright otherwise this work is also in public domain. So, these two doctrines are, are there this is first is sweat of pro what you have done whether you have done some work with that or not whether that your work is original or not. Now, second thing is just making compilation of data amounts to sweat of pro comes under copyright. No, now court is going for the some type of creativity, some type of originality. There must be minimum creativity must be there. So, minimum creativity should be there or now court has given judgment has make balance between this sweat and bro modicum of creativity. The court is saying ki there should not be so much hard as per modicum of creativity, but there must be more than sweat of pro doctrine. So, there is a mid path between the sweat of pro and with the modicum of creativity. These are two very important doctrine under this doc, uh, we can say under copyright also and under the, this, uh, this uh, doctrine of fair dealing also. So, we can also discuss one important case just I want to cite some facts also relating to that the Eastern book company versus DB Modak very important case relating to fair dealing. So, what we can say here this Eastern book company is a very renowned company which deals with the Supreme Court cases or we can say compilation of case law also in different ports. So, Eastern book company has made a part to a book that is called Supreme Court cases with head notes, with footnotes or with some headings also and this D B Modak this person has also made a similar type of these law reports. Now, Eastern book company is claiming copyright on these reports. Now, D B Modak is also saying these judicial proceedings are we are these are in public domain. So, how copyright can be given these uh, judicial proceedings. So, Eastern book company is saying ki we are putting our labor, putting our money, investing time in making headings and headlines and footnote on these particular uh, we can say the judgments. So, the court is saying what uh, court is saying ki these these headings or the, these headlines or these we can say head notes, footnotes are also from these judgments. So, can we give copyright to these things? So, D B Modak is taking plea of section 52 as it is say, uh, this exempted the judicial proceeding. So, judiciary is saying you can you there must be some modic, modicum of creativity in that particular things. So, if you are ma making law reports and you are making some he headlines or we can say footnotes or we can say headings also then that must not be copied otherwise all these judgments are in public domain any person any student any professor they can use these judgments for their own purposes. So, same case with this another case Eastern book company has filed against Naveen J Desai. So, Eastern book company has made a judgment of I think 50 to 60 years in one particular CD. They have compiled a one CD ROM and selling it at very uh, huge price. And similarly, this Naveen J Desai has also this made a movie with same case laws as we have discussed in D B Modak. So, similarly in this case Naveen J Desai has also made CDs, laws and juriks. These type of CDs he is also selling in his uh, this uh, uh, these CDs. Now, 
it was in pipeline, but Easter book company has apprehension that it will uh, we can say this Naveen J. Desai will also sell this these CDs in competition with them with the same head notes or same footnotes. So, Eastern book company has also filed a judgment uh, this case against Naveen J. Desai. The same facts are there as we D. B. Modak here this Naveen J. Desai is saying ki these judgments are in public domain. So, and on that basis case was dismissed, but as per journal principle we should not make copy of the headings and these footnotes of a particular uh, this person or particular company who have invested their we can say uh, this time or they are work hard to create new thing relating to that. But if same thing is there which uh, just mere a compilation of data or just same judgments are there no one can claim copyright over that or just we can say there is there is sweat of bro you are just making a compilation of data then that is not covered under this uh, we can say copyright. So, this case was dismissed. So, if we see the international perspective why this fair dealing why this fair use are in law whether in USA or in this UK or in India. So, as per this WTO trips agreement 1995 there is a special provision as there are uh, these 75 articles in this trips agreement or 7 parts are there under the second part uh, these 7 parts are there and if you see the article 13 of WTO trips agreement it is specifically saying members shall confine limitations or exception to exclusive right to certain special cases which do not conflict with the normal exploitation of the work and do not unreasonably prejudice to the legitimate interest of the right holder. Unless and until there is no prejudice there must be some limitations or exception this should be granted to the any person who are belong to general public. So, whether you have exclusive right to some uh, we can say work but there are always limitations or exception as in earlier lecture we have discussed these copyrights are not absolute in nature these are limited in character by making copyright of these uh, these work you are not king just you have a these exclusive right you have right to exclude other also you have right to we can say a sale you can write to license you can write to also uh, these uh, translate also so many other derivative work you can create, but these rights are not absolute in nature we can use up to a fair limit. So, that is article 13 similarly this burn convention article 9 to uh, close to is specifically says about that the states all the member countries of burn convention for legislation or exception to exclusive right to a certain special case we do not conflict with normal exploitation work do not unreasonably prejudice to the legitimate interest of right holder. What I am saying to say this trips agreement is based on the we can say Paris convention also on GATT also and on we can say burn convention also. So, we can also discuss another case where we can say how this doctrine of fair this dealing is applicable in India. So, basic purpose what in this case Willie Eastern Limited versus and others versus IEM. So, what this court held that in this case the basic purpose of section 52 is to protect the freedom of expression under articles 191 of the constitution of India. So, that research private study, criticism, review, reporting of current events could be protected. So, as we have seen the section 52 is constitutional in nature it gives the right to all persons to use a, which uh, the copyright work for or in the interest of general public. So, section 52 is not intended by parliament to negatively prescribe what infringement is. So, the main purpose of section 52 is to make accessible the material before general public. If there is no affordability, there is no accessibility then we can also use section 31 of Indian Copyright Act which is relating to compulsory licensing. But now we are talking about this fair dealing we will also do two or three cases which are related to 
compulsory licensing under this Indian Copyright Act 1957. So, this is a very important case where the this judiciary has given the basic purpose or objective of section 52. So, we can also do here we have to find out whether this sky hub this a website who is providing unlimited access to the latest paper of science or all these things with this particular this code to remove all barriers in the way of science. Although this purpose of this website is good to giving access to all the material, but most of the material is copyrightable, but not in Orpheus group. So, here we can say elsewhere Royal Society of this, uh, this chemistry. So, th these three parties has filed a case against Alexand Alexandra Albakia. So, now we have to think whether this sky hub comes under the doctrine of fair dealing or not. So, in USA also US court uh, has barred this website because it has a huge number of uh, these uh, articles. I think more than uh, million uh, these articles are there uploaded on this website. So, US court as we have also discussed in doctrine of fair use ki how much amount that is copied by someone. So, this website has exceeded its limit so that this Delhi high court has also given judgment in favor of elsewhere limited and others by this giving the temporary injunction also against Alexandra Albakia saying Delhi high court is saying ki now in after 2020 this Alexandra Albakia should not upload the latest these, uh, these articles or the research paper on this website sky hub. But as we have visited till now she has also this uploading the web these latest research paper or the articles from the science or other streams also on the websites. So, now although this is for the good purpose of giving access to everyone and to removing barrier in the way of science, but as in the eye of law this is just like a Robin Hood it should not be there in the society ki we should kill someone or to uh, this uh, taking profit or we can say having making losses to anyone to make giving profit to someone somebody else. So, it is uh, against in eye of law. So, we, ha we can also discuss when a very important case uh, under uh, which is comes under the doctrine of fair dealing. So, this uh, we can say this uh, university of the uh, Oxford, university of Cambridge uh, there are so many other companies are there private publishers are there they have filed a case against Ramesh free photocopy services the shop which are in Delhi school of economics campus. So, these companies or these university press want to stop photocopying of their work or their books which were in this module which was uh, this uh, prescribed by the professors of Delhi university or Delhi school of economics and when the, uh, this uh, these companies or these university press filed a case against Messi photocopier, one local commissioner was appointed and they find out there are so many we can say this photocopies were there which are from 5 percent to 33 percent of original work or which are related to the this uh, books of this Cambridge University Press or the we can say Oxford University Press or there are so many other these uh, private publishers are also there. So, now the thing is that whether this copying of all these books amounts to infringement or not, whether this DU who has given the who has entered into a contract with Ramesh free photocopier amounts to infringement or not. So, here we can say uh, this justice and law has given a judgment by going through the uh, this facts and circumstances of this case as the students having accessibility to the books because there are so many books of 10,000 to 40,000 where that the professor has prescribed one and two article from that particular uh, these uh, these books. So, how can one student buy one book for one article? So, it is simple presumption is there students as well as professor will make photocopy out of it 
no one is going to buy whole for, whole book for one or two articles so and second thing is when the books are in library so automatically we can go to the library or we can also get photocopy from library also another thing is if that is also not allowed this justice and law has also taken the latest technological advancement as every student and teacher has now mobile in his hand or in his pocket so these mobiles and these uh, these mobiles have camera uh, inbuilt in it they can take photo of that or they can make pdf and they can take print out outside from this university so we can't restrict any student or any academic person from using latest technology so in the interest of justice justice and law has decided these cases in favor of students or in favor of these teachers also so someone has filed an appeal also in the supreme court but that was also withdrawn at later time so this is a very good case where justice and law has decided uh, this uh, this photocopy material comes under the this doctrine of uh, this fair dealing which is a part a parcel of copyright which is integral part of this copyright act 1957 which make the uh, beauty of copyright as it make the balance between the public as well as private interests so we can also say ki what justice and law is saying ki making course packs for suggested readings for students by photocopying portion of various prescribed reference book does not violate the copyright of the publisher so this is a very good judgment given by justice and law relating to this we can say this in the interest of students so we can also discuss another important uh, this case law so there is one another important case which has also used the doctrine of fair use for the interest of general public so in this case there is one uh, case of usa where author guild has filed a case against google incorporation so author guild is a association of person who has against the one of the important project which was started by google books google company that is google books so google book uh, company has started to make scanned the all the important books or the all the books which are in the world best library whether it is a new york library whether these uh, we, we can say oxford university library cambridge university library or yale law school so google has started uh, and giving billion of dollar rupees to this library and uh, started scanning of those books so this contract was entered between this google incorporation and the libraries of world renowned universities so in this uh, we can say contract now the work is going on and the scan process was started and this some authors filed an objection relating to this project so they are saying ki library or the university has purchased these books from them or the publisher how library has right to give google to make scan copy for that and to making uploading of those copies on google uh, this website so they have their justification but google is saying ki if these authors are not ready to upload their books they uh, this google company is ready to give 25 dollars to each author who are not ready to upload their books if they are not ready with this contract then th this google is ready to remove their books from this th this uh, google website so second thing is there are more than uh, this uh, this millions of books where the copyright is expired or where we can say this uh, some authors are al also ready uh, to upload their books and some we can say uh, these uh, some books are of orphan in nature so google books has started this project with this intention to have accessibility but google is also they replied here ki it is uploading the snippets of those books on the website these books are not uploaded in whole where copyright is there they are giving snippets and so many pages are left blank intentionally so they are also giving the link if some persons want to purchase 
uh, those books after going through the snippets. So, there is Amazon.com, there is Bookcard.com, there is Flipkart.com. If some person throughout the world is like that book from the snippets they have provided, they can go for purchasing of that books. So, Google is saying we are making advertisement of books also. Uh, there are so many books where the author is not known, where copyright is expired or we can say where uh, orphan books are also there. So, this Google is done wonderful work by uploading these books. People are taking benefit from that and people are also buying that those books by way of these uh, links they have provided. So, uh, this, uh, this uh, the second uh, circuit court of USA has passed this case in favor of Google by protecting the interest of general public. So, they this court has applied doctrine of fair use for this uh, by pro, uh, for protecting the interest of author. So, this case was dismissed by the uh, this US second circuit court. So, very important case where this doctrine of fair use is applied by US courts. So, we can also see there is another case University of Oxford Press versus Narendra publishing house. So, here this case is also relating to literary work. First, this case has given reference of University London Press versus University Tutorial Press, where it, it was held by the court, the question papers are literary work. First thing we have to uh, consider this, the question paper of university and school are comes under literary work and copyright can be based in the questions. So, first thing is that, now second thing is that, if someone is making answers or guide to that particular questions. So, what will be happen? So, now the thing is that and this uh, in this case the university of this Oxford press has made some books of 11th class for example, for mathematics. So, in starting we can see on any part of book it is specifically written on second page left side of second page no part of the books could be stored in uh, or in travel system or transmitted in any form by any means without the prior permission in writing um, by this given by Oxford or as expressly permitted by law. If you see any book we have owned or we have possessed in every book these lines are there. So, from these line can it implies ki no part of this can be uh, taken for uh, personal use or for commercial use. But here the Narendra publishing house a made a guide to those questions paper. So, but here now the question arise whether this prime FSI amount to review or which whether this is falling under this fair dealing provision of section 52 uh, 1A uh, close uh, sub clause 2 of Indian Copyright Act 1957. Now, the court held that although these questions are there, although the copyright vest in the these uh, question paper, but the Narendra publishing house is give providing guide to the student with answers. So, it may amount to the fair dealing, it is not an infringement, this is a fair dealing, it is not copying the whole or the question paper, it has given as we have already discussed ki how much is too much. So, question papers all in public domain, all the copyright vest in the question paper in uh, this uh, Indian Supreme Court has also uh, this uh, uh, we can say decided the ca uh, cases where question paper amounts to comes under the copyright and the university is we can say copyright holder of these question papers. So, that is also important case, we can also see there is so many cases Eastern Book Company versus uh, this D B Modak, Eastern Book Company versus Naveen J Desai or we can say University of Oxford Press uh, or versus uh, D U photocopy case or we can say this University of Oxford Press versus Narendra Publishing House. So, we can also discuss here there are so many important cases where this compulsory licensing as well as doctrine of fair dealing is there. So, we can say this in, in Prasar Bharti versus 10 sports there is also a, this dispute relating to this uh, we can say broadcasting of matches uh, and this entertainment network versus super cash industry where this is related to the radio mirchi Kanpur where the super cassette industry has a, this exclusive right over the millions of songs and this radio mirchi want to uh, play these songs on the this uh, FM channel. So, now the question arise whether the copyright board 
has we can say power to fix the royalty or not. So, in this case this radio mirchi or we can say entertainment network was allowed to play the songs by under we can say title of compulsory licensing by it is saying they can submit the reasonable fee in the account of this super cassette industry and they can play the song. So, there are so many cases where we can say super cassette industry versus Chintamani Rao or we can say ESPN star sports versus global broadcasting news or this these all cases are relating to the we can say these new channels also or some company who has taken or who has bidding for some world cup some Beijing Olympic where they have invested a lot in tender or bidding and some other news paper news channel and these TV channels are uh, using snippets of those uh, matches or taking some uh, live rec uh, recording of those matches. Now, we have to think ki how much these type of uh, we can say these part of that particular uh, these live recording can be uh, broadcast by other channels. So, different case laws are decided by Delhi High Court as well as Bombay High Court under the uh, this context of fair dealing. So, we can see here we by comparing this doctrine of fair dealing or with the fair use we can say under fair dealing of uh, Indian Copyright Act where section 52 have specific list. These are the provisions whether it is private use whether it is a we can say uh, criticism review or all these things the list is exhaustive in one sense, but under this fair use the list is not exhaustive, they can decide their cases as per discretionary power of judge in USA. They have four factors whether any case is comes under those factors that will comes, comes in fair, uh, fair use otherwise that amounts to infringement. So, all these cases or will depend on the facts and uh, circumstances of we can say individual cases under this. So, thank you very much this is relating to the uh, this doctrine of fair dealing very important concept under section 52 of Indian Copyright Act 1957. Thank you so much.